morning, millennials. Welcome back to the morning toast. I know what you're thinking. Claudia, you said there was no episode. Well, I lied because I'm a big liar and I'm joined by one of my besties, a, t- a toast regular at this point, Mr. Brian Kelly, aka the points guy. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Thanks for having me on this. What could be kind of like a solemn day. Yeah, so... Not to bring the mood down, but there's a lot we're going to get through today. Yeah, so let's talk about why we're here. So um, we had no episode scheduled for today, but you and I have been meaning to make this episode together. Um, just to talk about... After you know, your intervention. After my intervention, yeah. Just to talk a little bit about what's been going on with you. And um, before we dive in, I know that you, you've you been like holding like a secret. Not a secret, because that makes it sound bad, but like, you know... um. There's a part of yourself you haven't revealed. Yeah. Uh, You might also want to give the trigger warning. Trigger warning. Um, Brian and I are about to be incredibly annoying and dramatic. Um, But that's what we do here at The Morning Toast. We love love a moment, you know? Today is the episode of Secrets. I've got some secrets to share today. That should be our title today. Episode of Secrets. (laughs) That's why her hair is so big. It's full of secrets. So tell me a little bit about what the last couple of... Before we dive in, tell me a little bit about what the last couple of months have been like for you. You know, like once the Not Like Other Girls tour wrapped mm-hmm. in May, it was it was tough on Lonely. me. Yeah, like because being on tour with all the girls, mm-hmm. like camaraderie, you, family, community. Yeah, like that hetero energy mm-hmm. I really connected with. Uh, that much I've always known about you. You know, the girls like Love on you. tour, like just getting that s- validation. Mm-hmm. And when it just dropped one day, I missed the girls, you know? You missed the girls. And by the way, the girls have missed you, so I'm sure everyone is thrilled that you're on today's episode. But um, I have a big secret for them. That you're you're kind of like, you know, sharing I think it's time I share. You're sharing your truth. I'm gay. (laughs) Claudia, we're going to pretend to be serious. Wait. We actually... Kidding. There's other... Big news that I want to share today. So, Brian, first of all, thank you for giving the Toasty exclusive on what you actually have to share because it's wonderful, amazing, amazing news. And the Toasters, I mean, I'm so happy for you. The Toasters are going to be so happy when they hear what's been going on with you. Um, So now, I think, let's really share what's, and by the way, not to make everything about me, but I've obviously known about what Yes. But you're, so actually, and there's, Claudia, there's a secret you don't know about. <gasps> okay, so let's say the secret. Okay, let's okay. get into the big secret. I am going to be a dad. Yes! Brian is pregnant with a baby. Well, you're not pregnant. Brian is, has a baby on the way. Bun in the oven. Coming way, very soon, too. We are full third trimester. You're, you've been so, like, low-key about it. Um, the fact that, like, when this episode hits, like, babies will be here, like, imminently. Soon. Soon. Yes. Uh yeah, it's always been a dream of mine. Um, and I think when the pandemic hit, you know, I had broken up with my ex fiance, mm-hmm. you know, TPG's business kind of like, you know, took a Changed. pause. I'm home. I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm surrounded by family, my nieces, my yeah. nephews. And I've, I've always known I wanted to be a dad. And at that point, I was 37. And I just remember thinking, like, I want to be a young ish dad. Right. I what am I waiting for? My first for? kid in my 30s yeah. and, you know, being gay and doing IVF. Long the whole time. process takes a long time. So it was, you know, the fall of 2020, I actually started to get, you know, serious about it. And it's been a, you know, pretty amazing. I'm very lucky. It'll basically be two years from the day I started to having my son. He's, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a boy. It's a boy. It's a boy. Um, and I want to ask you all about like the process, but I'm curious if at all, because I've we've been on like several trips together um, since we've known that you're pregnant and that your circuit's pregnant. Sorry. And I find people's reaction to it very uh, mixed because they're like, oh, are you married or and yeah. you're doing it by, by yourself? Like, and I love and I'm curious if one, it ever crossed your mind to wait until you yeah. found the right person. And two, what like what was it about the idea of doing it on your own that made you want to do it even more? Because I know. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, certainly waiting, you know, doing it. And I, I and, I, you know, to be honest, I am still friends with my ex. But I think I was rushing into that. I proposed after nine, yeah, 10 it months. Was quick. I was like rushing because in my head I have to check all these boxes. Right? I can't have my kid until I'm married. And oh, I probably rushed that relationship way too quickly. And then, of course, then the pandemic hit. And then I'm like, I'm not even dating in 2020. Like, dating in 2020 was psychotic. Psychotic. It's psychotic normally, (laughs) let alone a pandemic. So I'm like, there's no way I'm going to have a, you know, I'm living in Pennsylvania, Mm -hmm. loving life on the farm. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have the farm then. But um, so I was like, you know, there's no way that I would have a kid in my 30s if I waited. Until after the pandemic. Yeah, you have a timeline. 
And then also, I mean, just looking, I mean, my parents are still together after almost 40, well, over 45 years. Wow. But so many families aren't. Mm-hmm. And I just may call me selfish, but I'm like, I just, I'm already so attached to my son. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I will never split him. Like, no, you know, and so a part of me is like, I have the financial resources. Mm-hmm. I have an amazing family mm-hmm. and I'm going to have help, yeah, lots no, of help. Of and I'm not going to, you know. So why not do it on my own? No. And I actually think ha- being a single gay dad will act, like the, attract me to the right person that I want to be with. I completely agree with that. Like, I think you entering this new era of your life, very, you know, domesticated almost, that's the type of energy you're going to start to attract. Yeah. And I love that as like a barometer for who you yeah. bring. Like, is this person good enough to meet my son? Yeah. And, and I, I have love a lot that. of gay single friends who have done it. Um, my one friend had twins they're wow. now nine years old amazing mm-hmm. happy obviously Andy Cohen mm-hmm. and seeing Anderson Cooper and their modern families and just happy mm-hmm. like you I think you know and I work with a lot of kids and charities like kids need love you know that's it and I'm gonna give my kid and potentially kids lots and lots of love no your kid is well like actually so lucky. there's one other secret that you don't know about oh okay so I've been showing Claudia the pictures. child's name is Claudia <laughs> Claude. <laughs> Claude Kelly. That's um, cute. No, actually, so I've been showing Claudia uh, uh, pictures of an egg donor that it's not the real egg donor. The I'm the egg donor? No. You want, are you ready? You harvest what? Margo is the <laughs> egg donor. <laughs> That no, actually, I'm serious. That wouldn't be fair. Honestly, like after we, we kind of like hooked up in Vegas. Right, years I remember. Ago, yeah. That's how I knew you were straight. By the way, if What would you do? Then I would, I would literally... Well, you, that would make you my... Well, nothing. It would make you my. It would, it would make you my nephew's wait. You didn't biological that? dad. No. <laughs> but if Margo was your egg donor, that child would be like gorgeous and yeah. tall. Like that's almost like not and fair. savvy. I'm just so proud of Margo. She's such a boss. She's killing it. She's like, my baby. Yeah. Wait, I have so many questions for yeah. you, and I know a lot of the process, but. So you make this decision and I love the decision. Yeah. Like why wait for life to start? Yeah. You have all the means. You have so much love to give. You have a huge family. There's literally no reason not yeah. to do it. Where does one start yeah. after that as a single gay man? So I actually, I started my doctor in New York was gay and had kids. So he recommended me to a surrogacy kind of consultant. It was a woman in Minnesota. She had like the small surrogacy practice in the whole process of IVF, um, you know, Getting eggs is relatively easy Um, and getting an IVF clinic to make embryos with your sperm and an egg like that process is not that hard. It's like you get the egg, you Mm -hmm. know, as long as your sperm is healthy or Mm -hmm. eggs healthy, like it's pretty easy. Strong swimmers. Luckily. So it's really funny when you donate or you you give your sperm. Mm -hmm. They actually put it through like a, a race course. Wow. So like your your swimmers have to go boop, 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 boop. Like, oh, wow. And only the strongest right. they use for the insemination. Mm. So you get your strongest swimmers. And then um, I decided to, you can buy frozen eggs from clinics. I was recommended, I my egg donor, I chose the egg donor and then she did a whole, she cycled and I got all of her eggs from one got month. It. So you have a bunch of options. So I had a ton of eggs and then uh, in the lab, you know, they inseminate them all. And I chose to do genetic testing, mm-hmm. which allows you, and the clinic that I used um, in San, Di- San Diego Fertility Clinic, they're amazing. Uh, I'll just shout out Dr. Donishman is like top in the industry Mm -hmm. he's so amazing but anyway so once you have all the embryos they put them through testing so you can actually see they rank all of the eggs and you know more than half of the embryos were like "Mm, not great quality got it so if you do this testing you can actually rank and use the strongest embryo that has the highest chance of you know uh, surviving right Um, so i was very lucky the first time that i transferred it took um, wow. And that's, is, by the way, that happens to nobody. Yeah, like. It was very, but, and, uh, but the biggest like pain point is surrogacy. So apparently during 2020, everyone decided, oh, you know, I can oh. work remotely. Now's the time to have kids. Yeah. So there are very long, like wait lists, wait lists for surrogates. And of course me, you know, coming from my airline elite status, <laughs> I'm like, where's the priority line? <laughs> like, where can I upgrade yeah. and jump the list? But when it comes to human life, no. you know, like they're very, and which is amazing. Like As that. it should be. Um, so, but luckily there, 
is an LGBTQ focused smaller oh. agency that when at one point I had talked about wanting to have kids and they reached out to me, they were TPG fans. Wow. Um, Elevate baby is their name. Um, awesome, awesome people. Um, Kyle Dean Massey is the founder. He's like an actor turned now surrogacy, um, company owner, him wow. and his husband actually just had a baby, Taylor Fry. Um, so anyway, they're really good, but they had reached out to me and said, if you're looking and connected, they were like, we have the perfect surrogate. So um, I think so many people told me like, and I, I remember talking about it in the press years ago, like that I wanted to have a baby. People are like, don't jinx yourself. You know, there's a lot of superstition. Yeah, of and course. I see, but the, because I talked about it in an article, they reached out right. and I'm having a baby today because I was open about the process. So yeah. of course I know it's different for everyone and some people, you know, certainly it's very private and I of respect course. everyone's decision, but sometimes like putting it into the universe, like can, can pay off. So of I got matched with this amazing surrogate who you've I've met. met. She's so, I mean, the fact that she is carrying your giant child, she's tiny. I like know. it is shocking. I actually felt guilty wait they told you you, you couldn't do twins, twins right yeah they were like we, I, so I, I didn't think she would actually be allowed to be my surrogate because she was so small yeah um but it, this is her you know she's had kids before mm -hmm. my ivf doctor is like no 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 it doesn't work like that like she'll be fine mm -hmm. so um but this is definitely uh she's like this baby is huge is huge and by the way the best part and i feel like i've really been around for so much of the process but like unintentionally like we didn't even know we were out to dinner in New Hope with your parents when she you had done the process of you flew out to San Diego yeah. to inseminate, right? Yeah, so the embryo transfer. So you create these 10 day old embryos and then they freeze them. So I, uh, and you, the cool thing is if you want, they'll actually tell you the sex of the baby. Wow. And um, did you choose to have a boy? I did choose to have a boy. I, I was torn because I, it really doesn't matter to it me. It doesn't. But like, three of my really close friends all had baby boys in the last year and just a part of me maybe is that is that the patriarchy no i think it's no, nice I was like just grow like, up and with I, kids your age. now that i have this like farm, farm. and all the other boys I, I don't know i just felt like it's a boys club yeah i no, know maybe I like that's that. like problematic no, but it's not, no it's, not. it's like what my gut said and at the end of the day when it comes to you have to trust family planning you can 100%. do whatever you want but i just think it's amazing whether you're gay or having fertility mm -hmm. issues like there is so much science now that yeah. can like dramatically I have a lot of my, you know, lesbian friends who just had a mm -hmm. baby via IVF. Like the science is kind of crazy. It's amazing, by the way. Like how you were able to watch that picture of you, literally with your mask that on, holding that picture with tears in your eyes. Like is literally the cutest the thing ever. The whole process. When I transferred the embryo, I was in the doctor's office. You see your frozen embryo, this ten-day-old, and embryo. it's like defrosting. You have to verify that it's yours. Obviously, there are all these controls, and then the, you know, the doctor and you know inserts it and I you know saw that little embryo land on like the it's uterine so wall or endometrium wall mm -hmm. or I'm still like not great with and by the way, that's something that you know when you get pregnant the conventional way you can't see I know my mom said to me she's like how cool is that that you literally have known your son since the time that he was like created Ins yeah the no it's instant. crazy and I started bawling Aww. that day because I instantly knew I knew I was like pregnant that day yeah I was and then when she called you like a week or two later yeah. to like, she officially had taken a dinner. test. Yeah. That she was, didn't, she, yeah. My surrogate is like, she's very in tune with her body. And she was like, I, you know, I didn't feel, she was like, I hate, I, you know, she was like, I don't want to get your hopes up. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, the odds are, you know, Nev never in your favor. But then, um, yeah, she was like, do you want me to take a pregnancy test? And I'm like, technically I think she was supposed to wait another week. But, yeah. But um, she knew. But she's like, you know, of course, the pregnancy test isn't perfect. Mm -hmm. And then I was out to dinner with you. and That was so much fun. Holy moly, here we go. So that was in like, uh, January. Yeah, that's so crazy. So now everyone's like, are you nervous? I'm like, no, I'm not. I mean, I know my life's going to change, but I, I've jumped through so many hoops. To get I'm here. excited. You're like, ready. Like, it's been a long time coming. Yes. So now here's what I'm focused on. First yes. of all, the baby shower, which I am actively planning with a few people. When I tell you, like, you're not fucking ready for what is going to go down, like, it is going to be so twisted. <laughs> it's going to be like a last hurrah for you. It's like, it's not like other baby showers. This is actually, I've like, this is, so normally I'm the one to plan events, mm -hmm. travel. You could call me a control freak. Uh, just a little. And like, 
I did feel weird. My mom, I was like, I don't want to do a registry. You know, I feel. You have to. But my mom was like, no, you idiot. Mm -hmm. Like, no, we're doing a registry. People want to get you gifts. It's okay to accept gifts. It is. And you're not going to It's not about being able to afford. It's about allowing people to. And so many people have been like, the gifts that I got at my baby shower. like Save me. And like, you don't even realize. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So yes, please. I will take the help. Like, I've helped everyone plan trips. So yeah. Right. The parents out there who are like, no, this is what you need. Yeah. I'm not going to be like, no. 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 And like, you need so much fucking crap. Like, you don't even realize how every little thing and all these things you accumulate, you're going to need so you're very nice to not want to do it but i was like you're kidding no, me my, right? my mom wouldn't let me she's no. like and by the way what did i get brian i tried to go nice you know one of the more expensive things on the registry this fucking chair jackie sends me it because jackie has the chair yeah. it's like a motorized chair jackie sends me a message the next day huge recall of this chair it was very dangerous i'm like brian return the chair claudia's already trying to kill my I'm baby i'm coming yeah because literally he's taking, taking too much time away from you brian attention now i want to know what kind of dad you're gonna be like did you grow up in a strict household i did well strict for sure my parents i grew up very respectful mm-hmm. i i call myself like the last wave of like my parents were not helicopter parents mm-hmm. Like I grew up in my neighborhood. I have two older brothers and a younger sister. Like we would leave the house in the summer at like 8 a.m. on mm-hmm. our bikes, go to the punt. Like as long as you're home by five for dinner right. and then you go out and come. Like my parents were like, do whatever you want. Right. And I like that because I think my parents, but they also like ran a strict household. Like, yeah. I didn't curse. Mm-hmm. My parents didn't hit me, but like they would. You would like, get punished the when fear you deserve of God. To. Like my mom could yeah. snap her fingers. <laughs> She'd be on like a corded phone in the kitchen. This is the 90s. She would like look at me and snap and I'd be like, you knew. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to be that strict. Um, no, but I do think it's important to fear your parents a little bit. Not in sure. like an like, actually scary way, yeah. but in a way where you respect them and you respect but authority. I do believe like your child, you know, he will be a part of my life. We're going to travel. Mm-hmm. Like he will travel from a young age and I know it's going to be different. And I know there are things I'm going to say today that like all the parents out there who are listening are like, yeah, we all said yeah, the same right. thing. But, you know, I want to show him the world. Like, I actually now am, like, you know, I didn't, I I mean, I traveled domestically growing up, but, Mm -hmm. like, he's going to, I want him to really see the world, and I think it'll change the way I travel. Yeah, of course. Um, And the way you see the world. Yeah, and, you know, we've got a long time before he goes to school, so, Mm -hmm. you know, spending some time abroad and... Um, I don't know, but I also want to wait to see what he likes. I think I've been reading a lot on like parenting and it's like, I want to, and you know, the things that he naturally likes, I want to encourage. Of course. And so what, um, what like things have you been reading websites, books? Like, have you been leaning on to kind of prepare yourself? Well, the biggest thing is, so my friend is a doula and she like, I'm just in the mode now of like, okay, you know, like learning about the skin to skin. Like I want to be in that room instantly. No one touches my son. Mm -hmm. No one weighs him. He will go instantly on my chest, you know, if possible. Right. Like, um, and just understanding, you know, the sleep training, the formula, Mm -hmm. you know, which European formula is the best, like Dutch goat milk versus, (laughs) um, so so uh so that i'm like in that mode i'm like i mean i always read articles on parenting and um but yeah i think and mostly i'm just talking to fellow parents yeah a lot of my friends have had kids Mm -hmm. um and most of my you know all the kids you know in my life are really amazing Mm -hmm. well-adjusted kids for the most part so i don't know um so in this moment like what do you feel you feel peace you feel anxiety you feel excitement i feel excitement i feel um I, yeah i feel like his due date it's i just have the so sense close. that he's gonna come early my yeah. surrogate feels that he's so it's like uh and i have to travel so there's just like a little bit of like i'm just ready for it to happen but mm-hmm. This isn't like nature. I can't like. You can't rush it. You can't schedule yeah. it. It's not a plan. And I want him to be on his time, you know. So, but I'm excited. I'm also excited to take time off work. I've yeah. actually never taken extended amount of time off work. Even when I travel, I'm always sort of working yeah, in a of way. Not, I mean, not that I'm complaining about my gig, no. but, but like to really unplug from work mm-hmm. for a while and yeah, and just spend time in the fall with the new baby on no, my farm. It's going to be like beyond. I'm, I'm so, so, so excited. And you have a name picked out. We're obviously not going to share it. I have a name that I've just always loved. It's a strong name. And you know, my, everyone I tell is like, Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's Kelly. 
Kelly Kelly. Yeah, Kelly Kelly. That's cute, by the way. Yeah. And you, did you factor, when you were thinking of names, you factored in, your last name is really unique because it's um, a first name and a last name. Yeah. So it makes like, it can be really punchy. Yeah. I think a lot of your success has to do with your name, honestly. Brian Kelly, like that's a Brianna, name. Christina. Brianna, Christina, Vanderpump. Wakile. Armstrong, Armstrong Leaks, Kelly. <laughs> Wakile. Um, Wakile Kelly. <laughs> Um, and so when you're thinking about like names, Jackie was really like, you really don't know how hard it is until you have to name a full human being. So you had this name. I know you had it for a while, even before. I had the name for as long as I can remember. And it just like, it stands the test of time. Mm -hmm. I think I liked this name when I was 16. Yeah. It's like strong and iconic. So, uh, I feel very strong about it. Plus there, his middle name will be a family name that Mm -hmm. like, uh, Oh yeah. It just, it's got a. You know, I feel I feel very strongly about Even it. Even though Jackie had suggested a name that almost took oh. off your name, Jackie's good with names. This one, I, it I was think a you good can share. Name. Sh- well, so your name is Brian Kelly, and so is your dad. Yes. He's senior. So, but I'm not junior because we have different middle names. So, to have a third Brian, so Jackie recommended, or she her suggestion was we'll call him Trip. Right, like which obviously because he's the third. Brian. But you're, the points guy in your and table. And the points guy, the trips. double entendre. So we thought about it for like... Is that like, a double entendre? Yeah, because yeah, it me- has yeah. multiple meanings. But eventually the name you had was better and like... Trip Kelly. That I mean, that would be a really good name, Jackie. I mean, he Jackie's does... so good with He that. sounds like a douche. Like, yeah, he's who, Southern. A little yeah, Southern. Pops his collar, you yeah. know? But I like it. Yeah, he's an essay. Yeah, like he's a frat guy. Yeah. Loves beer. Uh, kegs dance. Wait, um, so I'm not religious. I'm not doing godmothers and godparents. What... Like, but you're obviously going to be special to him. Auntie. So what should we, Auntie Claudia? Yeah, I mean, I'll have to think. Like, I'll have to see how my relationship with him blossoms. What um, are you going to do if he's straight? Set him up with Margo. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. But literally, I was just saying this to Jackie. For some reason, my association with Margo is so young. Like, <laughs> when we're out to dinner and I see a 15-year-old, I'm like, oh my, a cute boy for Margo. Even though, like, Margo's 25 now. I just, like, keep forgetting Of course, can you're adjust. always, like, on text chains, Margo, she doesn't make time for us anymore. She doesn't. <laughs> She's too busy at high school. No, if your son is straight, um, I will, of course, accept him as he is. And I will find a nice Jewish girl for him. Perfect. Or even if he's gay, I'll find a nice Jewish boy for him. Yeah. But... Um, when he becomes a certain age, like I will not stop setting him up. He's probably going to hate me. Yeah. I mean, if he's straight, he'll hate me. If he's gay, he'll love me. Sickening the house. Sickening. We'll sing, we'll sing Janet and Celine together. (sighs) And that's another, where does Janet fit into all this? Janet is. Pasta is going to come out for the delivery. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, he's excited. He like. He's going to make literally homemade formula. Yeah. He, well, we tried to put him through a lactation course, but unfortunately oh, it didn't take. It didn't work. It didn't <laughs> it was take. tough on us. <laughs> and by the way, for people who watch, Pasta is my best friend, yes. my sister. And we honestly, not, this is going to really change his life too. No, but it's like we're doing this together. I know. It's like nice. The pasta's fans are called the noodles. <gasps> I love noodlers. that. Noodlers. <laughs> We've got the toasters, the noodlers. <laughs> and you would have called- um, By the way, just to switch gears, Pasta, like we were tubing and Pasta had fans on the Delaware River. Okay, that People is- People like, Pasta Fiz-. We went to a party later that night in Bucks County. Pasta Fazulo? Like, I mean, his content is- like, Pasta Fazula is about to like just Blow up. take over. Mario Batali, watch out. Watch, uh, b- cooking with Babs, watch out. Watch out. I love her. <laughs> Olivia loves her. Oh my God. Okay. So you feel like, how do you, well, this episode comes out tomorrow, but still, yes. like now that everyone knows, you are going to get, I feel so like. So feel, I mean, to all the new moms and dads out there, feel free to DM me your tips. Mm-hmm. I am open to all advice. Product recommendations. Yeah. I love this. I'm I've already so got the Duna, the Duna travel. Jackie is obsessed with the got Duna. Got my Nanit Pro. Yes. I've got my Nestig Wave Crib. Oh, good. Wow, like it's prepared. a crib that turns into a bed that turns into like. Fabulous. Uh, the nursery theme is like we'll have to wait and see on my Instagram. Oh, I don't even know what that is. What, what's I just theme? kind of finalized the concept. I yeah. had a lot of different ideas, but um. And we're just going to do like a safari type theme. You're going to, oh, by the way, that's amazing. You're going to be such a good dad. Like this is the role you were born to play. I'm so happy for you. I'm happy for me. Like, because first of all, I was able to keep the secret for well over two years. Good on me because yeah. I'm, I told people Jackie was pregnant and I was like, I could <laughs> I told you on the river. It was like literally so yeah. early. I'm like, and I kept the secret so fucking good. And I did allude, um, like two weeks ago on the toast that like, I have a really big event coming up. It was your, Baby shower. Um, and I was like, you guys are going to find out. Wait, do you know out. what you're going to wear yet? No, I need to get 
Do you have to wear? Do I have to wear blue? Like, no, because that's like heteronormative. I think it's just like, you know. It's, oh my god, look at me projecting my heteronormativity yeah. on you. I'm so sorry. Wait, do you remember that time I came out on your the toast? Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> that was the dumbest thing we've <laughs> ever done. We just wanted to be funny. I think we're hilarious. <laughs> like, we're funny. Um, You're gonna be an amazing dad. I would dad. just say, like, I when I was a kid in the '90s, like. I knew I was gay and I would go to bed and be like, if I could take a pill to be straight because oh, I want to have kids yeah. and I never thought I'd be able to have kids. Oh yeah. So like to all the, the gay boys out there mm-hmm. or girls and people, you know, battling infertility, mm-hmm. just like everything happens the way it's meant to yeah. happen. Oh, might have yeah. chills. I love that. It's so, so full circle. I You're am. literally like doing what you were put on this earth to do, you know, to make a mini you. God who help can terrorize us all. this earth for the God. next 50 years. Apparently he's like kick, like I'm a lot sure. of the things like my surrogate sent me pic, like videos of him just ramming through her. Mm-hmm. Apparently he's very active at he's night. He's ready. He's a party boy. He, wow. That's so unlike his father. <laughs> <laughs> well, the toasters are so happy for you. I know they're going to freak out. I love you so much. Mazel tov. Love you auntie. And make sure to be fi- following at Brian Kelly on Instagram. Like, for all the dad send updates. Me like, all your tips and, and send tricks. Send fellow um, single gay dads his way as well. Yeah. I think that's important to remember. remember. Thank you guys for listening. Enjoy this episode. Enjoy your weekend. Have an amazing weekend. And Jackie and I will be back for regular episodes on Monday. I love you all. Tickets Ciao. available at girlwithnojob.com slash tour. Bye. <laughs>